The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Um, we had a chill morning until 930. A bunch of earnings to go through, some different kind of stories. Uh, first things first, I want to say, and I'm bringing it up at the end of the show as well. But uh, this Friday, it's May 10th, uh, from 9 a.m. to about noon. What the heck happened there? 9 a.m. to about noon, uh, we have our third edition of Live Trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento. Come get in here. All right, so you get, for this price, right, you get two per month. It's some great, great content. Uh, the first two have been pretty successful. And, you know, the market's just a little bit kind of uncertain right now. So it's nice to have someone who's been trading for decades, uh, trading side by side uh, with you. You can ask him questions, get his uh, thoughts on everything. Anyways, I think it's good. I think it's worth it. And uh, people will be making the money back anyway. Uh, let's take a look right now at what we're trading. Of course, this is pre-market, but the E-mini is just down slightly for the morning. Uh, the Russell's off as well. NQs and the Dow futures. Gold contract trading at 2,323. Again, we're just getting into this kind of consolidation period on not a lot of volume. And so it remains to be seen kind of where gold goes from here. You know, a lot of this run up has been pushed uh, by China. They have some cooling economic situations over there after, you know, really beating out of uh, deflation, actually. Um, however, it does seem like the grass is greener over on that side of the world, at least economically speaking. Uh, we're seeing Musk go over there, uh, trying to, one, salvage some of the loss in sales, but then, two, uh, start one of the robo-taxi services over there. Which is interesting to think that uh, China is a competitor in the sense that uh, these newer, these, com these companies with this newer tech want to go over there and kind of implement it and test it and bring it there first. Now, again, I will say that's probably a lot more to do with the economic system over there, not the system, excuse me, uh, condition. Um, regardless, you know, a lot of this run up was due uh, to China in gold. A lot of the young folks uh, are investing minded and they start their investment journey, uh, essentially buying gold. Regardless, let's keep moving on. Uh, silver at 27.56, and then poor old copper down 1.42% currently at four bucks and 50 cents. And then crude oil continues to go down. Still not an oversold territory, but um, yeah, 77.82. Again, I think this will be nice uh, for our CPI going forward. Um, there's still conversation, again, that, you know, obviously Russia gets hit, the refineries get hit, this, is, this can be an issue, um, especially for the price of oil going forward. Uh, however, OPEC Plus said that it would work to increase um, output. The U.S. is producing more oil than at any other point in history and then more than any other country in history. Uh, so it, it seems like the supply is there for light, sweet crude, uh, excuse me, just oil in general uh, currently. Move on a little bit. Tesla continues to decline up to 3.67% right now. Uh, we'll see what they can get done. He's, again, sending some people over to China to try to figure out something regarding declining sales and uh, introducing the robo-tax. He's still dynamics at 132.69 in that dollar at 105.53. Uh, Let's take a look at Shopify this morning down 20%. So what happened? Well, uh, Wednesday they reported first quarter earnings that topped analyst estimates. Uh, but Shopify stock plunged on the e-commerce firm's guidance uh, for the current June quarter. God, I can't believe we're already in May, man. Ah, 
Released before the market opened, Shopify earnings for the quarter ending March 31st were 20 cents on an adjusted basis. Analysts pulled a visible alpha predicted profit of 16 cents, up from one cent in the year prior. Revenue climbed 23% to 1.9 billion versus the estimates 1.84. Shopify said Q1 gross merchandise volume for merchant transactions rose 23% to 60.9 billion versus the estimates of 59.67. Merchant Solutions revenue rose 20% to 1.4 billion versus estimates of 1.34. And then subscription revenue rose 34% to 511 versus estimates of 499.3. For the current June quarter, Shopify said it expects revenue to grow at high teens percentage rate on a year-over-year -year basis, which translates into a year-over-year -year growth rate in the low to mid-20s when adjusting for 300 to 400 basis points impact from the sale of a logistics business. Uh, gross margin for Q2 is expected to decrease by approximately 50 basis points compared to Q1 2024. Uh, in June quarter, analysts estimate uh, $2 billion in revenue and $65 billion um, for, for, uh, excuse me, uh, for the shop stock. Now, the company in 2023 sold its delivery and logistics business to Flexport. That was due to rising capital spending. Shopify, of course, uh, is just super dominant as a company. Um, and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, a lot of these brick and mortar shops that still exist are, they have not adopted Shopify. It's slowly changing, which I think is what some of this growth is in the user base and subscription. Um, but, th but that's the standard. If you have a brick and mortar, right, and you just, you know, you sell goods, uh, non-food, you, you need a Shopify account. There are a bunch of businesses starting, of people going to brick and mortars being like, do you have a Shopify account? No, okay, let me set it up for you. And uh, regardless, I think Shopify is, is dumb. I mean, where else do you go for this kind of thing? Let's see here. So the GMV increased 23% in the first quarter, which is pretty solid for them. And then in late August, they struck a deal to allow merchants on its platform to use Amazon's Buy With Prime service to deliver packages. Quarters compared to an average 20, yeah, they're still doing uh, okay. 20% is pretty substantial though. Okay, regardless, we can move forward on that. Uh, I think it's just interesting news. Shopify is, I mean, I, I've used Shopify in the past. Um, I think it's a very good platform. Okay. Another thing we can do is talk to, about Palantir, which I, so, you know, we had a drop of, I mean, this is a massive gap down on, <laughs> you can kind of see they anticipated uh, better, better guidance than they had, but this dropped like 14%. Okay, is weaker than expected guidance. I think everything is just weaker than expected guidance currently. So the Palantir Technologies fell. So it's Tuesday morning uh, as investors were unimpressed by an outlook for annual sales. Uh, the defense tech company stock is down over 13%, trading at 22 bucks. So down even more right now. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Talk a little bit about CARP and Palantir. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Pound, your guys. I mean, what can be said about this company? I don't get how you can develop... AI for the U.S. military and, and, I don't know, still not hit it big. So, fell 14%. We're still at that level from Tuesday. In the latest earnings reports posted, and this was at the beginning of this week, the company beat analyst revenue expectations, citing demand by U.S. companies for its boot camp and technology products. The company reported $634 million in revenue, while expectations were $615. Palantir revenue grew 21% year over year and 4% quarter over quarter. Its earnings per share were in line with the expectations of $0.08. Cents. Uh, the company forecasted a decrease in revenue for the current quarter with an estimated value between $649 to $653 million. This is lower than the $653 million that analysts were expecting. Additionally, the company projected full-year revenue between $2.6 billion, excuse me, $2.68 billion and $2.69 billion. And that was weaker than the analysts' estimates of $2.71. So the company closed 87 deals worth at least a million in the first quarter, including 27 that were at least worth $5 million and 15 that were worth $10. According to its earnings report, <laughs> but Palantir's U.S. commercial revenue growth slowed significantly, and I think that's really where they're coming, you know, into into problems, right? The commercialization. There are some analysts who believe that the commercial momentum uh, is not sustainable. New products helping catapult at more than 200% over the last 12 months. In the first quarter of 2024, Palantir was awarded $178 million 
by the U.S. Army to develop deep sensing capabilities for an AI-powered vehicle. And now we've seen some things too. I, I suppose it's probably something like Palantir, but but drones essentially able to analyze the battlefield and make real-time decisions uh, for people on the ground. Um, of course, famously, there was, an, and I don't know if this was Palantir, but they had one uh, that was essentially like a hunter-killer drone, and it would it was AI it would look at the battlefield all itself, and make its own decisions, and like deploy its own kind of neutralization techniques. And the uh, Marines actually ended up beating it. Uh, it. It beat the Marines multiple times. Uh, but the Marines got wise, and they started just walking around the, the arena uh, under boxes. And the AI couldn't detect it. Um, regardless, this is obviously the future. Um, and so I'm just, I'm a little, I'm just interested to see what happens to this stock. Because you'd really think, like, people would want to get in on this. I mean, it, it is so ingrained. Uh, into the U.S. from the get-go uh, for the U.S. government uh, with, with AI products. So, but I suppose the commercialization aspect is probably a massive issue for it as well. Anyways, we can move on here. Nikola, this company is rough, rough waters. 59 cents per share. Uh, the revenue misses estimates on slowing truck demand. And the thing is with these trucks is they cost so much to run. And they're so heavy. Okay, anyways, uh, they missed Wall Street expectations for first quarter revenue on Tuesday as the electric truck maker delivered fewer hydrogen fuel cell trucks amid an uncertain macroeconomic outlook and reduced spending by customers. The company reported seven, excuse me, revenue of $7.5 million, missing expectations of $15.8. According to LSEG data, its shares fell 5.8% uh, before the bell. It delivered 75 of its hydrogen fuel cell trucks in the first quarter, uh, excuse me, first two quarters of production, and completed the delivery of its reworked battery. The company, however, delayed its delivery timeline for its reworked battery trucks 2024. Nikola is finding it tough to sell its hydrogen big rigs as consumers and businesses curb spending on relatively pricier uh, electric vehicles amid high borrowing costs. Revenue from the company's trucks fell 26% to 7.4 million. Oof. Despite ramping up production for its hydrogen big rigs. And even just a revenue of 7.4 million is tough, especially for a public company like this. Its net loss stood at 147, smaller than 169, helped by a 15% reduction in operating expenses. Nicholas cash and cash equivalents is at the end of the first quarter stood at 345 million. That's down from 464 million. And the company said it's opened refueling stations in, Ch in California and Canada's Alberta uh, for its hydrogen trucks in March. I mean, you know, I, it's cool that we have companies trying to push this type of thing, right? I think just in this market right now, especially with like persistently higher rates, um, that's just not viable, you know? And they can be specialties for a little while but uh, I, I don't see where this mass adoption comes from. And it also doesn't have the height that like electric vehicles have, right? I mean, this is hydrogen fuel cells. Um, so I don't know, we'll see what happens with, with Nikola. But obviously, I mean, this, this stock's been in rough waters uh, for, for years. I mean, and that's just a slow, steady decline too. So. I mean, ideally, you know, you can sit and wait in here on these like 59 cent level for, you know, random pops up, right? And I mean, those would be big pops if it goes up to like, let's say like a buck 40 or something like that. But I don't see in what realm that's going to happen anytime soon, I would suppose. All right. Sorry, I was waiting for this to load. Okay, perfect. Let's check this out. This is Novo Nordisk. Okay, nice little move up on not a lot of volume, but regardless, um, the sales were up 26%. Misses 11% on Wagovi, which I did not anticipate. Ah. Uh, Novo Nordisk stock was trading down Thursday despite strong first quarter results. This was last Thursday 
uh, beating Wall Street consensus led by blockbuster GLP-1's Ozempic for diabetes and Wagovi for weight loss. Uh, Novo posted total sales up 25%, totaling $9.5 billion in revenue uh, from all of its drugs and beating estimates of $9.2 billion. Uh, Wagovi brought in $1.3 billion and Ozempic sales total three point nine. billion. This is really, again, the future of stuff. Uh, now, I still think they have issues, not I say they, but people who take it for weight loss, it doesn't stay off, right? So there's this kind of like, unless you consistently take and take and take and take it, right? So um, there's still a lot of room for other pharmaceuticals to get in there and kind of act as like an, you know, an auxiliary, I suppose, some of these drugs. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Uh, we have something interesting next segment. Stay tuned. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. You're filling in for Tommy O'Brien, however... We actually have a surprise. I believe we actually are joined by Tommy O'Brien. Tommy, how are you doing? Jacob Shoop, man, thanks so much for filling in, doing such a great job while I've been uh, away, recovering a bit. A little bit surreal, but it feels great to be back on air and um, and saying hello to everybody, man. Feels great. Absolutely. It's great to see you. So how you been doing? 
so I've been doing good, and boy, I got quite a story. So I know you're aware, and again, Jacob, man, uh, I know everybody knows this, but thank you so much for filling in for me. You've done such a great job, um, of course, and I, we couldn't do it without you, man. Um, and yeah, so so to kick things off, no matter what, bottom line is I'm feeling great. I'm going to make a full recovery, but boy, I got quite a story, man. We'll jump right into it. Um, so I've been gone Four weeks and a couple days. Today, today is Tuesday, and I've been out, I think, four weeks, and today is coming into that fifth week, basically. And to give everyone a little bit of a, a quick take of what happened, man, bottom line is uh, late March, I found out I had a brain tumor. And thank God, nothing to do with cancer or anything like that. It was a benign, slow-growing brain tumor. I had having some sight issues that popped up. And I went to the doctor, and the reason why I really want to tell everybody this, folks, is because, man, talk about a lesson in, in – I was very fortunate, bottom line. I'm going to make a full recovery. That's all that matters. I'm still recovering. Um, but I had some sight issues that popped up around my birthday, March 20th. I was very fortunate to have a primary doctor visit that was scheduled on March 21st. I went into my doctor – Normal checkup. I said, man, I got some issues going on with my sight. He said, well, you just turned 44. You know, things happen. He says, let's get you to a di- an eye doctor to kick things off. And I said, OK. He said, you know, we're worst case, and then we'll ramp it up if, if, if something happens. And so what happens is I go into them. And bottom line is, folks, don't wait. OK, that's going to be the story of what's going on here, right? You know, this health care deal and how – Everybody is just kind of a pawn, unfortunately, in, in, in the system. And you can't blame the doctors, man. You know, they're, they're full. They got their, their slate of things going on. You are the only one that can take accountability for yourself. So if you get one thing out of this, okay, remember this. So very fortunate. So I think March 20th was a Wednesday. I see my ophthalmologist. No, I see my, yeah, March 20th was a Wednesday. I see my primary doctor March 21st, which is a Thursday. They get me in to my to an eye doctor on that Friday, March 22nd. They say, you know what, these things happen, but just uh, to make sure things are all right, and believe me, I'm still recovering. I'm gonna show you some pictures, man, and, and I appreciate you filling in, Jacob, because you know I can't wait to be back for the full hour, but I still got right some recovery, only a month out from some pretty serious brain surgery, and thank God I had a great <laughs> surgeon. I'm gonna bring him up, Mr. Frank Rionis of Boca Raton Regional Hospital, who took great care of me, the whole team there. And so Friday I see the ophthalmologist, they say, these things happen. You're having some eye issues. It's it's um, six nerve palsy. And sometimes this stuff happens, I guess. It happens if you have diabetes, if you have a pressure in your brain. And so what happens is, is they say, you know what, though? We're just going to be careful. We're going to send you for a brain MRI. So, okay. And so first thing that happens is I'm calling around for MRIs, okay? Two weeks out, three weeks out. Man, I call Moffitt Cancer Center. I say, where do you guys? Can you guys do brain MRIs? They say, we're booking out to June or July. I say, what is going on, man? Thank God I stayed on the phone, folks. I made like 13 phone calls. I found somebody that could see me Monday for a brain MRI, right? Get the brain MRI done Monday, March 25th, I think it is. Have to chase those results down. I get those March 28th. I'm able to see a neurosurgeon the same day, this guy Frank Vionis. I drive all the way to Boca because I'm familiar with this guy. I've had some spinal surgeries before, unfortunately. See him on the 28th. Bottom line is, man, I had a brain tumor the size of a golf ball in my head. And thank God, like I said, slow-growing benign. Had been in there for like 10 or 15 years, they think. And um, they went in, they got it out. I got a lot of numbness still. What happens is you got nerves, of course, in your brain, and those are going to take a little time. So my eye is adjusting a little bit on my right side. Um, But I was having some pretty severe things ramped up really quickly, man. March 20th, I just kind of started having symptoms. And by the time they did the surgery on Monday, April 8th, I was having massive migraines. I couldn't sleep. Um, My sight was severely impacted. I was having double vision on my eyes. And um, so here, I'll give you a couple glimpses, all right? Here we go. So this is a quick glimpse of my brain MRI. You want to see something gas, wow. folks, okay? Pretty freaking unreal, right? So I see this. It's the shock of my life, of course. You know, I got Tommy, <laughs> who's three years old. That's the biggest fear out there. Um, and you can see how crazy it is, man. You know, I saw that thing. Thank God, okay, that it's a benign tumor. It's all they had to do was go in there and get it out. Thank God. They went in there. They got it out. Um, to show you what they did, man, there is my freaking head right now. You can see. Look, look, it looks beautiful, man. And it's going to be now. That was like two days after it happened, all right? And I'm sharing everything with you. I got, we got a great community out here. Yeah. And I'm sharing it because, number one, 
you got to take accountability for your own health period, folks. Okay. Um, my surgeon told, told me, okay, now my surgeon, I'll bring him up. If you need a neurosurgeon ever, folks, this gentleman, okay, the whole team. Now, I had originally, he, this guy was originally, this gentleman was the head of neurosurgery at Moffitt. And I had had a small tumor in my spine that was nothing years ago. And he did a great surgery on me. I went and saw another doctor at one point in Moffitt, was completely unhappy with that neurosurgeon. This guy now runs the Marcus Neuroscience Institute at the Boca Raton Regional Hospital in Boca. So I said, you know what? It's only a three hour drive. That's nothing when you got your health. I went over there, saw him on that 28th of March, and right away he said, yeah. He said, you know, unfortunately, this is what it is. Fortunately, it's probably a benign tumor from the MRIs they could tell. He said, we don't know until we go in there, we get it out. They scheduled me for surgery March 8th. I was literally out of the hospital two days later, spent a few days in Boca. Absolutely amazing, him and his whole team out there. Now, the other gentleman I'll give some props to as well, um, David Croce, okay? This guy is at USF in Lakeland. I got a second opinion from him. Always get a second opinion no matter what. I trust realness with my life, literally. This guy was amazing as well. If you're in the Lakeland area, this guy called me 6.30 at night one night, just giving me a second opinion. He brought my case to the tumor board um, at Tampa General. Outstanding gentleman in his own right. Um, both these guys, just very thankful. Um, but boy, Frank Freonis, man, you know, um, just a tremendous guy, taking great, great care of me. And yeah, you talk about life, folks. Now, I'll give you it all. This is, this is, you know, I'm doing well, folks, all right? I'm recovering. This is all post-surgery pitches, all right? Me and Tommy, were chilling out on the floor. He's playing <laughs> with the switch. This is only like 10 days out from surgery, hanging out in the bed, all right? Um, and there we are, the little man all fired up in his buzz outfit, okay? So things are good. And yeah, enjoy every day, folks, because you talk about a shocker, man. Um, March 20th, my birthday, I got two margaritas. We ate at Cheesecake Factory at the Brandon Mall in Florida. And I was driving home and had some sight issues. I said, what is going on, man? I was having double vision driving home. Thank God, timing is everything, but stay on it, okay? That's the thing. If I had waited for a two-week, three-week MRI, that alone, if I had waited, just just stay on it. That's all I can tell you about your health, man. Um, get second opinions. Find somebody. You're the only person that's going to care about yourself, unfortunately, when you go into this type of situation. And the bottom line is enjoy every day, folks, because, boy, you talk about a shocker, man. Um, and it's a new perspective on life. And I'm back, baby. Absolutely. And I feel great. And, 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 Jacob, thanks again for filling in. And I can't wait to be back for the hour. Um, I'm trying. You know, I'm getting there. It's a little bit of a recovery, folks, as you can imagine, but you can see. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm doing great. I'm doing phenomenal. I'm just taking a little time to make sure I'm good. You got to give the body a little bit of time to heal. And, uh, hey, enjoy every day, man, because life is a mystery to be lived, as they say. So, Jacob, thanks again, man. Absolutely. And, and seriously, thank you so much because you're doing an outstanding job. I watch you every day, of course, and we're lucky to have you. And uh, to the folks out there, I'm in the den every day watching it as well, watching that market. How can I not be? And it feels great to even even right now it feels great to be back on the air. I wasn't sure how it would feel, but it feels great. Totally. So I'm looking forward to watching the interview coming up with our man, Teddy Kegstad. And uh, I'm looking forward to being back. All right. We're so happy to have you here, Tommy. Um, you, you look great for everything. And uh, I Thanks, know I speak man. for everyone uh, in the den in, in TFN that we, we can't wait for you to be uh, fully back. It's going to be awesome. So. I can't wait. Awesome. Jacob, thanks so much, pal. Everybody out there, I see it in the den. I appreciate all the kind words, all that stuff. Um, I appreciate it all, and I can't wait to be back. So love you guys, and, uh, and I'll be watching. I'll be back, all right? Good deal, Tommy. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much, Jacob. Take care. Guys, we'll be right back with Teddy Kekstad To Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We just had <laughs> my earphone come out. We just had Tommy O'Brien on. Um, make sure you watch the archive afterwards, it is great to hear from him and he's making a full recovery with everything I know. Again, I speak for everyone. And saying we can't wait until he's fully back and until Jacob stops pulling out his headphones. All right, now follow me over here, we're at tfnn.com, okay? I'm gonna go over here to the newsletters tab. Now first thing, we have the Tiger Forex Report and that's by Teddy Kexat. This is released every Monday, it is a weekly publication and it goes over a uh, ton of great things, right? If you are a Forex guy, you're trying to get into it, or you've been in it for a while and just like being fully aware of everything going on, now this is the newsletter for you. I can't stress that enough. And furthermore, come over to services, and we have two webinar archives from Teddy Kexat as well. Now this first one is capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. And this other one, and uh, this seriously, if you are a you know new trader, okay, this Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies, phenomenal. You know, even, even if you're well-versed with Japanese candlestick patterns, uh, you've got to check this out. And you know, at 97 bucks, I mean, these are steals. Seriously, you get access to these for the rest of your life, for as long as you subscribe to it. Now, I believe we have Teddy Kekstat on with us currently. Teddy, how are you doing? Good morning, Jacob. It was nice to see Tommy for a little bit of a segment there. Absolutely it is. It, we're really happy to hear from him, so. Mm-hmm. Well, Teddy, what are we taking a look at today? I want to say, too, uh, I think we have a webinar in the works as well. Now, that's we still got some work to do onto it, but I want to put that out for everyone as well. We have something cooking up with you, Teddy. I'm looking forward to that. We do. We do. We're going to come up with a uh, live trading, most likely a Monday segment. It's probably the best Perfect. time to have a, a Forex uh, live trading event. So, uh, yeah, we're going to set it up for probably a two, three hour window a couple times a month and uh, see how people uh, react to it. So it'll be li all live action, live trading. We'll be breaking down the markets and ask, answering questions to whoever is uh, signed up for the webinar. So, yeah, we'll be combing the uh, FX markets and derivatives markets during those hours of trading. And I, actually I love that. Implementing and breaking down trades, whether to or to not take certain trades. Totally. And, and like I said, you know, one I want to say, Forex, this, it has this image, right? Uh, and I, I will say like online, but online is, is where all the conversation is now, right? And people right. want to get into Forex and they want to trade it. Uh, and it's just hard to know where to start. You know, and that's what I think is so cool about this product and the products you already have. I mean, I have I know nothing about Forex before watching your stuff and reading your letters. It is fantastic. So anyways, what are we uh, what are we looking at here today, Teddy? Well, I think the interesting thing that's going on right now in the Forex markets is you have a little bit of divergence. You have a stronger dollar index. Uh, the dollar as a whole has been strong versus most of the currency pairs. Uh, the past few sessions, we'll see how it goes. There's no real numbers this week until tomorrow we have the jobless claims, which 
most likely will t- uptick a little bit. That's expected. Um, if they were to go down um, or be lower than expected, that could cause a nice little uh, hiccup in the market. If anything, that could ha- cause a shift in yields. Um, right now, today, yields are actually ticking up. So, and you still have the dollar gaining strength. So that makes me wonder is if, if you're going to see, or is this just a short term diversion move and now we're going to just snap back into a range trade or if yields start to firm up, is that going to fuel the dollar, um, mm. which it could, which it could do that, you know? So the question is, are we range bound, like in a tight range or are we ready to at least um, push the trend at least for as far as dollar index is concerned. So and we can talk about a couple of certain currencies if you like. If yeah, there's absolutely. Anything in particular, or you just let me know what you'd like to talk about. You know, I'm curious. We were speaking a little bit about um, the yen last uh, sure. week, I believe. I'm curious to see what kind of the updates for that are. Okay, that is a good one. Now we've had extreme volatility in the Japanese yen uh, US dollar uh, pairing over the past few weeks. It started Big a week time. ago Friday and um, had a lot to do with the BOJ. Um, they didn't uh, really do much. Uh, there, There is a rate hike looming out there, but I wouldn't really get too crazy about it as to when it does happen. Uh, but we have had <clears throat> a, a very volatile trade. So we came back to um, last Friday, we hit a, a new higher swing low, if you will, after a crazy week and a half of trading. And this week so far, it's been strong. US dollar yen has been up. It's pushing new move highs on the week right now. And and that's the part that makes me wonder is if, if yields stay soft, mm-hmm. then most likely, especially with crude down, um, that this should be a rally to sell. Right now, it's in a sell signal correction. Um, I think that you really have to get it back above one. If it gets back above 159, and especially if it closes above there, well, that's it's really hard to fight that trend, especially if you start to see an uptick in oil and also an uptick in yields. Uh, but right now, with oil in retreat, still in yep. a corrective mode, and also with yields over the past week and a half of softening, it, it's 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 kind of a tough. It's, it's tough to gauge if we're going to get follow through. So that's why I would pay attention to this divergence and definitely key off that number tomorrow. Because if you see all of a sudden a big sell off in the 30 year Treasury bond and the 10 year notes, and especially the short term end of the curve, yeah. where you see a radical move on the morning after that 730 number, I would find it really hard to see the U.S. dollar not get an extended boost, which mm. could bring us to a sell off, a, a, a spike, which means that you can capitalize off that follow that momentum on that number. There's nothing to follow through into Friday, so you could probably capitalize on that exacerbated move and just get, and get out. You know, I would say not. don't try and trade at that as a swing trade. Take advantage of that momentum. Big time. And, you know, you, you bring up oil as well. I was talking mm-hmm. at the beginning of this, you know, we have the light sweet contract down, you know, actually quite substantially. We're at 77.68 in this yes. corrective mode, you're saying. You know, there are some fundamental things at play here, right? We're producing a lot more. You have OPEC Plus saying they will compensate for any loss that Russia is experiencing. What are you looking at, at least regarding, let's say, the monthly term uh, on light Swede crude? Okay, that's a great question. Well, we definitely have fallen on some really good support. Uh, the, the crude oil market's been trending lower for the past couple of weeks. You really haven't seen it at the pump, but you're definitely seeing it in the crude yeah. futures yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know. So um, now, as far as those factors that you brought in, uh, the fact that yields have been softening that helps to reduce the cost of carry, which helps to make crude bearish. Yeah. Um, I think that influences there. Uh, so that once again, I think yield is a big has a big part of it. If you start to see them uptick, that could help to set a floor in oil. I, I don't see us getting much lower than where we're at. I think that if we if we fall into below 75 bucks, I think 73 and a half is about as low as you're going to go. Um, and that'll be a basing of a range. And that's if we really have all this support. But with what's going on in the world, I wouldn't get to I would not try and fix a long term scope on that kind of a trade. I'd still be a, a buyer of dips than a seller of rallies in crude right now. You know, it's just it's too likely that especially we're coming into summertime, summer demand. Totally. Switch over. You know, like there's totally. there's so many other fundamentals that are about to kick in that have absolutely nothing to do with geopolitics sure. or anything like that. You know? So and unless all of a sudden people are gonna not go anywhere this summer, you know, I mean <laughs> it's it, well it, it which 
which could happen, but not with, with gas where it's at. If it gets another dollar higher, yeah, then people aren't going to travel, you know, so. Definitely. Teddy, thank you so much. I mean, it's amazing how in a short segment, you know, I can learn so much from you. So I really appreciate <laughs> it. We're Chico. looking forward to getting everything set up for you. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yeah, this summer. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. on we were just with teddy kekstat now again teddy has the tiger forex report released every monday and we have two webinars for you to check out again strongly recommend let us take a look at uh well reddit man pretty crazy uh give me one second here I believe this is it yeah up 5.16 percent all right, daily active users rose 37% to 8, 82.7 million, ahead of 77 million analysts were expecting. Companies were up 10% pre-market, higher revenue for the first quarter. This actually blew my mind uh, because I thought you were going to get, you know, not that from Reddit. What I will say, though, and I was thinking about it, you know, the, it's, it's interesting how being online you can see different memes, right, like that are going viral. And obviously, you know, people like them and, and it goes viral because they're relatable, right? And there's one I had seen recently, and it was, uh, you know, when you ask a question and you want to make sure it's right, so you add Reddit after it. And it's when you're Googling, right? Like, okay, why does my angle hurt? Reddit. 
you know, you type that in and then you get all these different forum posts from Reddit. And this is almost like the new way people, uh, you know, try, they're, they're crowdsourcing information, basically, crowdsourcing data. And Reddit is the place for that. Uh, I don't use the app at all. Uh, I don't like it. But obviously, you know, you have 82.7 million uh, daily active users. So the stock went up. That's very good for it. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. And, and I really think sitting on there, if they can, you know, solidify in some way. Now, this is a little bit like voodoo, I guess. But if, if they can make it in such a way that they, it really pops up when someone asks a question, right, um, like that. Uh, obviously, that's people visiting their site, and that's going to generate uh, ad revenue as well. What else is going on? TikTok is suing U.S. to block the law that could ban the social media platform. Uh, this is pretty nuts. The idea is that maybe they could sell TikTok. Not going to happen uh, because the algorithm they use is under lock and key, and there's no way that ByteDance is going to allow that to happen. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. We have Basil Chapman on next. Again, we just interviewed Tommy O'Brien as well, so make sure to check out that in the archive if you missed it. Folks, have a great rest of your day.